Hello, and welcome to Genesis Spirit of Women's Heart Program, Passport to Better Heart Health. Whether you're planning a day trip, a romantic getaway, or a family vacation, travel can help put your heart at ease. Tonight, we'll hear from two of our Genesis cardiologists about the best ways to stay heart healthy on the go, and you'll learn about common heart and vascular conditions. The doctors will also tell us about the new treatments and technologies available at the Genesis Heart and Vascular Institute. Later, our friends from AAA of Ohio will share some tips on planning a fun and worry-free vacation. Be sure to add your name in the comment section during the program to let us know you're watching. We'll draw names to win a door prize from our Spirit of Women business partners when the live program ends. Tonight, we are giving away door prizes from AAA of Ohio, Urban Comfort Eatery, and Northside Pharmacy. And we'll announce the winners in a separate post following the program. And we'll contact the winners via Facebook Messenger. Now, I would like to introduce our host, Jennifer Longfellow. Jennifer is the practice manager for the Genesis Heart and Vascular Group. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you, Linda. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to be here with you tonight during Heart Month. We want to introduce two of our new cardiologists, Dr. Elston Johnson and Dr. Kunal Shaw. They will give us information about having better heart health. First, meet Dr. Elston Johnson. Dr. Elston Johnson joined the Genesis Heart and Vascular Group in 2021, specializing in, in invasive cardiology. Dr. Johnson earned his Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine at the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine in Lewisburg, West Virginia. He completed his residency in internal medicine and a fellowship in cardiovascular disease at Doctors Hospital in Columbus, Ohio. Welcome, Dr. Johnson. Since you're new to Genesis, can you tell us about yourself and your role here? Sure. Um, so <clears throat> I think that one of the things that a lot of people don't know about me is that before I actually um, went into um, you know to medicine, I, I was a nurse for several years and really figured out that that's you know where I wanted to be. I really loved medicine. I just loved the whole patient interaction, and that kind of drove me into to going into medicine. And cardiology is just kind of one of those fields that you really get. Um, to really talk to the patient and try to prevent a lot of illnesses that can really affect people down the road. And I just saw in the community that there's a lot of preventable diseases. And certainly, um, I uh, love to be you know, here at Genesis to be able to talk to my patients and, and to have some impact on their life. In February, we often start making plans for taking a vacation. What advice do you have for our viewers to stay heart healthy on the go? Yeah, so this is a question that I get quite often because this is the time to take vacation, especially into warmer areas. Um, and some of the things that you can do to stay healthy on vacation is to really watch your diet. You know, a heart healthy diet is one of the probably most important things you can do to, to stay healthy um, and prevent diseases further uh, down the road because it's like your medicine every day. That's pretty much what I tell my patients in the clinic. And so what you do at home uh, as a heart healthy diet is what you should try to maintain when you're on vacation as well. And one of the most healthy diets you can uh, be on is a, what we call the Mediterranean diet, which is a diet that is high in vegetables and, and fish um, and chicken and, um, and, and definitely high in nuts and, and, and low in red meat. So that's what I usually tell my patients to try to do when they're on vacation. Other things that we can do is, um, when you're on vacation, is to try to maintain exercise. Um, I know it's, it's hard to think about exercising when you're on vacation, but it's one of the things that if you can try to incorporate um, at least 20 to 30 minutes a day, five days a week, that will really be beneficial for you too. And um, I know when you're on vacation, it's easy to kind of let go, <laughs> but one of the best things to do is to probably limit yourself to about one alcoholic beverage a day. Um, as um, increasing your alcohol intake can increase uh, your blood pressure, um, and which can lead to um, diseases down the road. If you're smoking, I would try to stop smoking. I know that you know when you're you know living a daily life that can be stressful. It's easy to have those triggers to want to smoke, but when you're on vacation, sometimes those triggers and stressors can be reduced, and it can be the perfect atmosphere to try to stop smoking. And as we know, that smoking is one of the most preventable things, uh, things that you can do to reduce your risk of having heart disease. Um, in the future, um, certainly it would, would be a great benefit to not only be on a great vacation, but also to stop your smoking, uh, stop smoking as well. 
And lastly, um, one of the most, another important thing you want to do is to check in with your, uh, your doctor um, just to make sure there's no um, issues that um, you will want to get addressed before you go on vacation. Um, and it's just always good to just have that check before you go. Dr. Johnson, as you mentioned, we know it's important to exercise when traveling. What about when traveling in a car or a plane for several hours? I have heard that you should move your legs when you can. Is that true? Uh, absolutely, it is true. Um, not only for just um, looking at just your peripheral arterial disease, but also venous disease as well. It's good to, you know, if you're on long trips for several hours, it's good to get up, move your legs, um, and, uh, you know, increase the circulation in your legs. Because, you know, if you're sitting in the, the car or you're sitting on an airplane for multiple hours, that can um, lead to um, a lot of blood pulling in your legs. And if it's not moving, we know that, you know, blood tends to clot, and it can lead to blood clots in your veins, uh, which can lead to deep vein thrombosis and uh, further issues as well. Um, so certainly getting up and moving um, is very important. Thank you, doctor. Can you tell us more about peripheral artery disease, or PAD? Sure. So peripheral arterial disease is something that affects millions of Americans. Around the age of 40 and above, around 6% of patients have peripheral arterial disease. And when we get above the age of 65, that can go up to about 15 to 20%. So it's something that is pretty prevalent out in our community. And so it's a disease that affects the legs um, and the circulation of the legs. And so when you have decreased circulation in your legs, it can lead to symptoms such as numbness and tingling. Um, it can lead to um, a lot of pain that we call claudication in your legs, certainly when you're up walking. Um, and it can really debilitate you and, and decrease the amount of things you can do um, on a daily basis. We always tell patients that you know, if you have disease in the arteries of your legs, you can have disease elsewhere in your body as well, such as in your brain and your heart. And so if we notice that, we want to make sure we manage that and treat that appropriately so that we can reduce um, this uh, progression over time. When it comes to vascular issues, how can the Genesis Vein Center help? Yeah, that's a great question, uh, Jennifer. I feel like one of the, you know, kind of hidden things that people don't really realize is about vein care. You know, and vein care kind of spans the spectrum between just being a cosmetic issue to being an issue that causes severe impairment in daily life. Um, and the vein clinic can help to manage that spectrum of disease. Um, and, you know, sometimes patients can have issues with one of the more severe aspects of vein disease, which is um, deep vein thrombosis. And some of the signs and symptoms um, of that can be uh, pain and swelling in the legs. Um, other issues that can arise, such as varicose veins, and these are kind of what we call superficial um, uh, veins, which are just veins that you can see on the skin surface. Patients can have symptoms that can go from just feeling like their legs are tired and heavy um, to a burning sensation or those bulging uh, issues of veins on their legs. And we have several different things that we can do to get rid of those veins um, and also get rid of the symptoms that the patient has as well. Um, and certainly if, if patients have those symptoms, certainly we'd love to see them and be able to manage that for them. Thank you for your time, Dr. Johnson. Oh, you're welcome, Jennifer. Next, we welcome Dr. Kunal Shah. Dr. Shah joined Genesis Heart and Vascular Group in 2021 with a specialty in general cardiology. He completed his internal medicine residency at Brooklyn Hospital Center and his cardiology fellowship at Mount Sinai Beth Israel Medical Center, both in New York. Welcome, Dr. Shaw. Since you are new, can you first tell us a bit about yourself and your role here at Genesis? Sure. Um, so I'm here as a general invasive cardiologist. You know, I started my journey in medicine, you know, while I was in med school, cardiology just flowed naturally to me. Um, you know, since after, after completing my training in New York, I worked as a physician, a travel physician in various institutes throughout the country. Before, right prior to this, I was working at the Cleveland Clinic. I was actually here to do a travel job as well. And while I was here, I saw a wonderful team approach and a very vast cardiac pathology. And uh, I felt that this was the place that I needed to be. And I've been here ever since trying to treat patients as best I can. February is American Heart Month. That means it's time to focus on ways to promote and maintain heart health. Heart disease is a leading cause of death for both men and women. Each year, over 700,000 Americans suffer from a heart attack and 600,000 die of heart disease. Can you tell us about new technology and procedures at Genesis Heart and Vascular Institute that is improving our patients' heart health? 
Absolutely, Jennifer. Yeah, we have um, several modalities that can help patients. You know, as, as basic as we start, you know, we have EKGs, Holter monitoring um, type of modalities. Then we have, you know, we have echocardiography, 2D and 3D. Um, we have several modalities for stress testing, um, exercise, as well as chemical stress testing modalities in, involving nuclear medicine, as well as um, treadmill and exercise stress testing. Um, we have modalities such as cardiac MRI and cardiac CT, which can be very helpful in order to assess things better and to, you know, more um, invasive approach, we have our interventional colleagues working with heart catheterizations, placing stents, doing structural, uh, structural procedures such as valve replacements. And now we've added new technology as the, such as the clot retriever and the flow retriever, um, which our interventional colleagues can use to remove thrombus from uh, different arterial systems. We also have sclerotherapy for vein, for our, for vein therapy. So there are several modalities um, across the board that we have here at Genesis. Of course, prevention is the best medicine. What do you recommend we do today to prevent heart disease? That's a, that's a great question, and that's really what my main focus is on. I believe that is the treatment, um, is prevention. Um, you know, there, there are several things that we can do to help reduce the risk of heart disease. Um, first and foremost, you know, we have a, the, the biggest risk factor of all is we see a lot of people that smoke. Um, smoking is unfortunately a very big risk factor for heart disease. You know, we have several ways to help our patients uh, hopefully decrease or quit this habit completely, which can really uh, significantly reduce their risk for heart disease. You know, there are other conditions such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes. These, you know, by controlling these as well, we can reduce the risk of heart disease. You know, living a heart healthy lifestyle, including you know, exercise, you know, and, you know, if you have evidence of heart disease, we recommend five times a week, at least 30 minutes or more. Um, if you're at risk for heart disease, three to five times a week, if possible, 30 minutes or more. You know, eating a healthy diet, what we do on a regular consistent basis is what makes the biggest difference. Two diets that we use in cardiology, especially that we've seen that um, have evidence backing it is some these diets called the Mediterranean diet. The DASH diet can be very helpful as well to decrease, you know, your risk of high blood pressure. Um, by having good exercise habits, good eating habits, you can also have you know, um, proper weight management. This can also be very helpful as obesity can be a, a risk factor for heart disease. Um, the most important of all is stress. By managing our, our stresses, we can um, live a more heart healthy lifestyle and significantly reduce our risk for heart disease. We hear a lot about controlling cholesterol, Dr. Shaw. What is cholesterol and why does it matter? Cholesterol, you know, so basically cholesterol is a naturally occurring substance. It helps provide structure to our cell walls. Too much cholesterol, if you have too much cholesterol in our system, it can accumulate on the walls and in the blood vessels, and it can raise the risk for heart disease. You can consume cholesterol when you eat more animal foods. There are different types of cholesterol, you know, HDL cholesterol or high density lipoprotein. This is, um, this is your good cholesterol. It protects your heart and blood vessels and protects you from heart disease. Um, then you have your bad cholesterol or the uh, low density lipoprotein or LDL. The reason this matters is that if you have high cholesterol and you have too much bad cholesterol, not enough good cholesterol or high triglycerides, you can have an increased risk of, heart, of a heart attack. Therefore, it's important to know your numbers. We recommend that all adults age 20 and older have a blood test to check their cholesterol levels every four to six years. Although some, some things such as age and genetics are out of your control, you can take the steps to lower your cholesterol levels and reduce the risk for heart disease. You can, you can work with your doctor and develop a cholesterol management plan. And that's what we can really help out here with at Genesis. Thank you, Dr. Shaw. We also hear about risk factors for heart disease. Some you can do something about, others you can't. It can be overwhelming. What can people do to reduce their risks? Absolutely, that's a great question. Um, you know, first, we need to assess the individual patient's risk factors. I think one approach is really getting to know the patient on an individual level and seeing what their lifestyle is like. What particular things in their lifestyle can predispose them to more heart disease? Um, and like we talked about, there are things that you have in your control and things you don't. Genetics um, is one of those things that you may not have in your control. But the things that we do have in your control, there are four things that make the biggest difference. The first thing is toxic habits, things that we, the, we introduced to our bodies that have no benefit on our bodies and only cause harm. The number one thing is smoking. Um, by quitting smoking, unfortunately, you know, I, I'm not a big person who thinks that absolutes are necessary, but when it comes to smoking, you know, whether it's one pack a day or one cigarette a day, it's causing just as much harm. And so it's very important to, 
quit that and, and you know, not have that as part of your lifestyle if possible, because that can reduce your risk for heart disease significantly. Um, you know, alcohol, excessive alcohol intake, drug use, um, excessive s soda pop, things that have chemicals in them that can cause, that have no benefit on our bodies, it's better to reduce those things and not have them as much, as, as big a part of our lifestyles if possible. The second thing is your diet. You know, what you eat is, you know, you, they say you are what you eat and that's very true. Um, you know, if you're not eating healthy, you know, that, can, that can cause a lot of problems. That can predispose you to more plaque buildup in your arteries. Um, if you think of your body as a vehicle, and if you maintain your vehicle well by, you know, putting the right kind of gas and, you know, maintaining your car with good oil, you know, and you, know, you want to use good quality products. The same thing is with the food intake that we have. Um, our bodies are natural, so more natural food intake is going to be more preferable. The third thing is exercise. You know, when you, um, by exercising, you can help reduce your heart risk significantly. Not only that, if you do have blockages in your heart, by exercising and introducing your body to that stress, you can actually help make new arteries to bypass blockages naturally. So that's, it, it can be very therapeutic as well as diagnostic. You know, if you're not really exercising that much and you're not challenging your body, you may not be aware of symptoms that we can catch beforehand to prevent a heart attack. So by exercising and staying active, it can be very helpful. And the most important thing of all is stress management. You know, stress is a big reason why we tend to, you know, not eat healthy. Sometimes we, we use smoking as a crutch to help us with our stresses um, and other bad habits. You know, stress can predispose you to significant heart disease. It can increase your blood pressure. It can cause you to have a lot of plaque buildup in your vessels. And it's something that's very important. You know, there's conservative ways of decreasing your blood pressure naturally, as well as medications if we need to. Same thing with cholesterol. By managing your cholesterol and your blood pressure, that can be very helpful for heart disease as well. So there's quite a bit you can do. Dr. Shaw, when it comes to increasing physical activity, can you tell us about the Silver Sneakers program here at Genesis? Absolutely. Um, that's something great that we have here at Genesis. So basically, the Silver Sneakers program is a health and fitness program that provides gym access and fitness classes for older adults. You know, the studies have shown that Silver Sneakers participants with gym visits had higher self-reported physical and mental health scores. The fitness program is aimed for patients age 65 or older and includes the following benefits. Um, use of participating gym facilities, their fitness classes specifically designed for older patients of all levels, um, access to online resources like workout videos, nutrition and fitness tips. You know, you get to meet a community of fellow participants. When you're doing it together, you stay more motivated. Um, some Medicare plans covered as well. Silver Sneakers is a great way to start exercising if you're over the age of 65. Thank you, Dr. Shaw. Silver Sneakers is a great program. Thank you. If you would like more information about this program or to learn more about the Genesis Heart and Vascular Institute, call 740-454-0804 or visit genesishcs.org heart. Thank you, that was great information. And while February is Heart Month, it's also when the winter doldrums may get many of us dreaming of an escape from the daily hustle. So a vacation may be just what you need. Our next guest, Ashley Duhamel, sales manager of AAA of Ohio Auto Club, is here to help you plan a stress-free vacation. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you for having me, Linda. First of all, AAA wants you to know that it's still possible to travel during this pandemic without losing your mind or your money. That's where we come in. What are some of the first things you should do when planning a vacation this year? Right, well first you want to establish a budget for your trip. Whether it's a family vacation or a couple's getaway, establishing a budget and sticking to it is going to make the rest of the process go much smoother. Then you really want to consider where is you want to go. Is this an exploration vacation, a relaxation vacation, or maybe a little bit of both. You know, since the internet came about, it really gave travelers the independence to arrange their own travel plans, yet it also forced them to go at it alone whenever something went wrong. Luckily, travel agents are back in style. And according to a 2021 survey done by MMGBY Global, 57% of millennials are planning to use a travel agent over the next two years. And that should really be your next step, getting in touch with your travel agent. Travel agents can save you time, money, and stress. We provide advice and advocate for our travelers before, during, and after your trip. Also, a recent study said AAA found that a third of U.S. travelers say they're more likely to purchase travel insurance this year, specifically due to the pandemic. The number one benefit travelers want from a travel insurance policy is to be able to cancel at any time. Since all travel insurance policies are different, 
Working with a travel agent is essential to helping you match the right trip insurance that meets your needs and budget to protect your investment. And we truly are the experts in all things related to travel. Thank you, Ashley. Is there anything special we should know about flying or traveling in general during the COVID pandemic since so many things have changed in the last two years? You're right. Things have changed so much and so fast in the last two years and continue to do so every day. But some of the things to consider when traveling in 2022 is have your travel agent help explain your destination's COVID-19 restrictions and requirements. Travel with all necessary do travel documentations, including health insurance cards. Keep photocopies of these, your passport or vaccination records on your phone as a backup. Anticipate the expenses associated with delays and cancellations, including the possibility of having to stay longer if stranded. Have your travel agent explain travel insurance that specifically provides coverage for travel interruption and additional expenses due to COVID-19. Notify your credit card providers of your travel details. Specify your location and duration to reduce the risk of frozen cards due to unusual activity. Consider signing up for TSA PreCheck. Enrolled members get the most convenient experience with the least amount of physical contact and screening. There's no need for screening bins, shoes, belts stay on, and laptops, liquids, and food all remain in the carry-on. Ashley, what are the COVID requirements airlines are requiring for flying right now? Well, COVID requirements vary depending on destinations, but generally masks are required in all airports and in flight as well, while vaccinations are not required to fly necessarily. Nevertheless, it is important to arrive at the airport in plenty of time prior to departure. We recommend arriving between two and three hours earlier for your flight. And if you do decide to book your own flight, make sure you're booking that early morning flight. Early morning flights seem to be less susceptible to encountering problems from cancellations or delays. And check in 24 hours in advance and enable the airline notifications on your mobile device to get updates on your phone. And if your flight is canceled or delayed, the airline must try and accommodate you on later flights, or they're required by federal law to provide a refund if you request it. Your travel agent can help sort that out in all of those instances. That's good advice. But if flying is not for you right now, what places do you recommend for a day trip? Maybe a staycation nearby or somewhere around Ohio? Yeah, sure. There's so much here in our own backyard. Sometimes short day or weekend trips are all we need. Columbus has so much to offer if you're looking for a city trip. It really has something for the whole family. The Columbus Zoo, Kosai, a variety of cu cuisine, sporting events, theater, and the arts. Geneva on the lake perhaps for a couple's getaway. There's lots of wineries in that neighborhood. Putin Bay or Lake Erie shores and islands in general for a summer trip. Uh, maybe Amish country if you're looking for a relaxing getaway with a bed and breakfast and antique shops or wineries. Hawking Hills if you want a quick adventurous outdoor experience. Maybe you can get a cabin or do some hiking or kayaking and just unwind away from everyone. One thing to note is that it's important to call ahead to ensure the hours of operation. So many places have altered hours or unfortunately even closed down during the pandemic and the internet just isn't always reliable when looking up those hours. Calling is the best way to confirm everything is open. Again, this is, this is where a travel agent is a huge benefit because they can do that homework for you. Thank you, Ashley. What tips do you have for our viewers to make any vacation stress-free? Yeah, so work with your travel agent. Let us alleviate the uncertainty. We're the experts, and we're here to make sure your vacation goes seamlessly as possible and explain all that fine print with foreign policies, cancellation policies, and change fees. Number one, cover your medical needs. There's nothing more stressful than being ill when traveling. So first, pay a little bit extra to ensure your trip with trip protection. Make sure you pack any required prescriptions, over-the-counter medicine and sunscreen, Plan spending money and, and plan a budget for it and stick to it. Allow a predetermined amount for excursions, meals, and souvenirs. Plan some downtime during your vacation. Often we feel like we need a vacation after our vacation, so don't overdo it. Plan for pre and post nights at hotels prior to international travel and plan a midweek lounge day during your week long stay at Disney. Pack light. If you're me, you won't use two thirds of what you packed and roll your clothing instead of folding it. But don't forget the wrinkle releaser. And bring a money mix. Organize your cash, foreign and domestic currency, and ideally two credit cards. Ashley, can you tell us where our local AAA office is located? Yeah, absolutely. We are at 3934 Terran Trace in North Point Center here in Zanesville. And we look forward to planning your next getaway. Thanks so much for having me, Linda. Thank you. That was very helpful information, Ashley.
And thank you to all our presenters this evening for sharing a wealth of information with our Spirit of Women members and viewers. And don't forget to add your name in the comments to be entered for a chance to win a door prize. We'll notify our winners via Facebook Messenger. We'll take your name for about five more minutes after the live program ends. And if you're not already a Spirit of Women member, we invite you to join us today at genesishcs.org slash spirit. Again, thank you for joining us and watch for more Genesis Spirit of Women programs coming soon.